it hasn't even been a month on the job so far. I'm curious to know what has surprised you the most about becoming the superintendent of police? Uh, becoming superintendent of police. Um, <laughs> that's, the, that's the most surprising thing for me, but um, no, nothing has really been surprising since uh, I've taken the role. I mean, I've, I've been here for years and um, nothing is surprising. I do realize there's a lot of work to do, but uh, surprising, nothing surprising. Tell me a little bit more about that. When the mayor picked you for this job, what did he ask of you? What was his request when you become the superintendent? Well, he wanted to know what my vision was for the city. And um, the, the mayor's uh, perspective is that everyone should be involved. And I shared that because uh, the police can't do it alone. We, we need everyone involved. Everyone in this city has to be a stakeholder. So if we want to see our city move forward, and a beautiful city that it is, and we want to keep it that way, then everyone has to get involved. It cannot just be the police. I had a conversation not too long ago with, with some of your predecessors, with Jody Weiss, with, um, with uh, Eddie Johnson and Gary McCarthy, and they talked about how they were surprised at the level of politics in this job. What has your experience been with that? You know, it, it's, it's funny. My experience with uh, the mayor has been uh, pretty much hands off. Uh, he has his vision. Um, he's ultimately the, the boss. You know, this is um, his city right now, his department. But right now, it's the Chicago Police Department. He's allowing us to do what we need to do um, to figure out how we're going to fight crime moving forward, uh, reform, police reform, uh, how we're dealing with the consent decree. So he's, he's been uh, open and he's been listening, which is, has been really helpful um, to me, um, just having that understanding that we have a job to do as the police and we have to be politically neutral. and. Uh, it, it seems that he has a clear understanding of that, so that's been really helpful. And I, I imagine you have a full plate. I, I know it's a busy job. There's a lot going on in the city of Chicago, but I'm curious to know what you think the number one public safety threat is in this city right now. You know, it, it, it's a lot of things that we could tie it to, but right now we have to get, we have to find a way to hold violent criminals um, accountable. That is our number one safety threat. We have an abundance of guns in this city. Our officers uh, over the past three years have um, recovered a record number of guns, made record numbers of gun arrests, um, and still shootings and violence persists. So we have to find a way to hold these most violent criminals um, accountable um, because we know the robberies and things of that nature may lead to higher levels of crime people being injured and all the way to people being killed. Um, we really have to do something uh, when it comes to penalties for people who commit violent acts. I think we talk a lot about the crime numbers, but there's also this perception of crime and violence in Chicago, the feeling that people don't feel safe living here in this city. How do you begin to address that as superintendent? Well, we, we from a police perspective, our officers have to be as highly visible as possible. Um, we have to be talking to, to people. We have to be uh, out so that everyone sees, the citizens can see us. They see that we're out there and we're out there uh, helping. And we are. We just need to get that information out more. I think part of the problem is we have social media we have the media and these things are reported in the news and that's the only information uh, that uh, our community members are going on. As a police department, we've got to be out there a little more in spreading the information about what we're doing, what our officers are doing. We also need to be out uh, passing out the information on safety tips for people, things that uh, they can do to avoid um, becoming victims of crime. Uh, information that they can report to us that's going to help them and help us fight that crime. So um, when it comes to information, I think that we've 
lacked getting that information out to the public and that's one of my focuses now just to get more information out to the public. And I know one of the first things you've done since becoming superintendent is, is eliminated this tiered system uh, for officers, a tiered deployment. Officers get two days off now. That's amazing for morale. That's a huge boost for mental health. I want to talk about that, but I'm also curious, do we have enough police officers to have that voluntary overtime now? So here, uh, tier deployment wasn't necessarily a voluntary um, uh, overtime initiative. Um, that was a cancellation of days off. Right now, we have to really focus on where we're going to put manpower. So we have to have a full assessment of locations where we need extra officers, and it can't be random. The other thing is our officers have to have some time off. This is a tough job where they face danger every single day and they have to have time to decompress. Those are their days off. Now, we do know that we're short officers, so there are going to be times where we're going to have to cancel days off and there's going to be overtime, um, especially during those summer months and uh, those major holidays where we need that additional manpower to keep the city safe. Democratic conventions coming up as well. Absolutely. And um, so there are going to be times where we're going to have to utilize overtime. But we want to be smart about how we do it. And we want to make sure that our officers are well. If our officers are, are, are not mentally well, if they're not healthy, if they're not feeling good about what they're doing, they're not going to do well in the community. So we have to make sure that our officers are the best that they can be, getting the rest and, uh, that they need so that they can decompress, so they can go out and be the best officers for the community. We hear a lot from members of the community, from aldermen as well. And the city of Chicago needs more cops. And you talked about those vacancies. Are you gonna fill those? Do we need more cops in the city of Chicago? Oh, we, we, we will take all the officers we can get. Um, however, we know, especially over the past three years, four years, um, since the riots, uh, COVID, um, recruitment has been um, tough. And not just here in Chicago, but across the country. It's been really tough to hire officers. And a lot of that has become uh, at the hands of negative information about police officers and policing. And uh, a lot of it has been unfair, right? Um, if you don't know what police officers do, if you don't have a true understanding of the job or the conditions that officers have to work under, you don't really understand the magnitude of the work that these officers are doing, the great work that officers are doing. Um, obviously, there has to be police reform, and we should engage in making the police department the best that we can make it. However, we can't stand by, criticize the police and the jobs that they're doing or what someone feels we're not doing, and not be willing to be a part of improving the department and helping us recruit people to take the job. So um, we have to have a boost in recruitment. Um, what I'd like to do is recruit from neighborhoods, recruit from communities, and right here in Chicago in the state of Illinois, so that people who are invested in a better city are willing to step up and work toward being a part of that. Getting more people in the job. I'm also curious to know, and I'm, I know I'm kind of moving quickly through here because we don't have a lot of time, but we've talked a lot about the migrant crisis in Chicago. We have migrants sleeping in police stations. I imagine that puts a strain on manpower and resources in your department. How are you guys handling that? Well, and that, that goes back to the resiliency of officers. And this is, this is one of the things that I mean. These are things that the community doesn't necessarily see. Right, the work that the police officers have put into this uh, migrant crisis. They, they're in the stations, in our police stations. Our police officers have purchased food, clothing, um, toys, 
uh, for the children. And a lot of this is really hard for police officers to see, you know, children sleeping on floors, pregnant mothers, nursing mothers, uh, sleeping on the floors of police stations in tents, uh, you know, outside. And uh, that's challenging for anybody. It doesn't matter if, if you're a migrant or if, if you've been here. Um, it's challenging to see that. And to see it in the districts every day is really tough on the officers because they see people who are down on their luck when they walk into that station, they see it when they walk out, and then they go to jobs where they see people who are down on their luck. So we have to do the best that we can to make sure that those officers are decompressing from that also. Yeah, you've really put a big focus on mental health, yes. and I think more so than any other superintendent in this job because it is such a big issue right now. Are you optimistic? I, I guess give me the sense of what you think the future looks like for your officers and their well-being. And, and what needs to be done? Well, I'm optimistic, and I have to be. I mean, I, to take on this role right now, there has to be a level of optimism. You have to believe that things are going to get better. But you can't just believe that. You've got to work toward it, and you've got to make some decisions, and some of those decisions are going to be tough. Some of them are not going to make everybody happy. Things that I say, are, it's not necessarily going to make everybody happy. but. That's not the intent. The intent is to do the right thing. And when we talk about mental health, that means that we have to do right by the officers who are putting their lives on the line. If, if I, I would tell anyone that if you wanted to do a ride along or you have day in the life of a police officer just to see what an officer deals with, you'll have a better understanding of how an officer is affected by what he or she sees on a daily basis. So again, if we're going to make sure that the community um, is safe, if we're going to make sure that our relationship with the community grows and continues to grow, we've got to make sure that our officers have the right mindset when they walk out. Because anybody, any human being on any given day where they're stressed, right, they're fatigued, they're hungry, what, what, whatever those issues may be that affects you cognitively, we're putting that officer into the community and it could break down relationships. So when we, we have our officers who are feeling good about the job that they're doing, they'll do a better uh, job when they're out, into, uh, out in the communities. I've got one more question about, um, I guess this is kind of a staffing question, but um, Mayor Johnson has talked a lot about treatment, not trauma, and his budget pilots a program that will see civilian mental health responders going to certain calls out at, uh, on the job, how exactly is that going to work? Well, I, I, I welcome it. Now, we have to look at it once we get it started. When we talk about a non-criminal um, response, right, we're not responding to a crime, but someone who's, ha who's having a mental health crisis. If we can send people there who specialize in dealing with uh, individuals with mental health issues and free up our police officers to do proactive police work, it's going to be truly helpful to us in the future. That's great. So a couple of uh, personal questions for you. I first asked you what surprised you. You said that I'm here. And um, so I'm curious, raised on the south side, 28 years in the Chicago Police Department, is this something you aspired to do? Uh, you know, as a, as a young person growing up in the community of Inglewood and then becoming a police officer, it's not even something at that time that I believe was achievable. Um, but moving through the ranks, uh, seeing things from a different perspective, um, because as you go through this job, there are challenges and there are things that you don't know. And once you're in a position, you get to know more things. Um, did I believe that I could do the job? I, I don't believe there's a job out there that I can't do. It's just, it's just my, my take on it. Doesn't mean that I think I'm the smartest person out there, but I believe that if you put in enough work, you can get the job done. Um, and uh, to be here uh, right now is just, it's an honor. It, it's, it's uh, probably one of the most honorable things that uh, I've uh, ever taken part in.